fans of uh, old school sword and sorcery and heroic fantasy had some bad news yesterday. We learned through Twitter that uh, Charles R. Saunders, cult sci-fi and fantasy author, creator of Imaro and Deshue, passed away. We learned this through uh, the Twitter of uh, Tak uh, Kirksey, who is a producer, is a TV producer for MSNBC. He says in his Twitter he was a trailblazer who spent his literary life fighting uh, the omission of black people from mythic literature. So basically he was one of the few people of color who was in the fantasy back in the 70s and the 80s. His signature character was Imaro, also known as the Black Conan, and he was an answer to Tarzan, a reclamation of uh, black majesty. Yes, uh, we'll get to the Tarzan in a while, and magic after his childhood watching black people reduced to props and villains in Western fiction set in Africa. He had a very important essay called Why Blacks Don't Read Science Fiction back in the 80s, I think it was 1981, and he was examining how racist fantasy used to be back then, and he was an inspiration for a lot of uh, African-American writers of fantasy and science fiction, and we also learned that there is a television adaptation of Imaro is nearing the end of its development, so we will have an Imaro television series and maybe people will have the opportunity to, you know, to give a look to this overlooked sword and sorcery hero. So yes, Tak Kirksey was working with uh, Charles Saunders for 16 years to get a TV adaptation of Imaro, which also has a very rocky publishing history, and rest in power, Charles, uh, 1946-2020. It was bad news, I don't know how many of you are aware of uh, Charles Saunders and his work. Personally, I have only read a couple of his short stories starring Imaro in uh, pulp um, anthologies that were translated in Greek back in the 90s and the zeros, and I have read two of his stories, Death in Jukun from 1979, and The Pool of the Moon, I don't know where it was, but when it was published, but uh, he had an interesting life. Charles Saunders was an interesting author. He was born in July 12, 1946, in Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, in a small town, and after he graduated in 1968 with a degree in psychology, he moved to Canada, and he ended up um, in Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia in 1985, where there is a very strong African-American community. He used to work as a reporter. He was a copy editor for a local newspaper. He had the night shift. So he had his um, days available to write his fantasy stories. And he was a fan of science fiction and fantasy. He basically wrote the moral stories they were Conan in Africa. He took his inspiration from the Robert E. Howard Conan stories as well as from Tarzan stories by Edgar Burroughs and he thought what would be like if the Hyborian Age was set in sub-Saharan Africa because Conan has been around the Mediterranean or the equivalent of Mediterranean in many of his stories. And okay, Robert Howard also had his Solomon Kane stories set in Africa, some of them but they were um, written from a perspective of a white European Puritan fighting evil. Saunders Imaro was, was set in Niambani, that's Swahili for home, which is a fictional prehistoric Africa. And his stories, the two stories I've read from Charles Saunders, I know there have been some novels, uh, five Imaro novels, but the publishing history was a bit spotty. At the moment, I can only find two of his books available as ebooks on Amazon, as well as a th uh, another novel as a uh, paperback. And that's the reason why I have read more of his work, because I was, um, you know, I was in a bit of a uh, uh, book buying ban, believe it or not. I mean, I'm a, it's a very bad ban, but I don't order uh, too many books in the last year, so I haven't been able to buy his novels. I think I'll get his Zimaro book in ebook form, but he is really interesting. He did a lot of short stories in science fiction magazines like uh, Dark Fantasy, Tulin Carter's uh, Year's Best Fantasy Stories. He had a rocky publishing history. His first novel was Imar was published by Dow in 1981, and it was uh, 
a collection of six short stories, Mawaza Mawanzo, Turkana Knives, The Place of Stones, Slaves of the Giant Kings, which I think in their issue it was uh, removed because it, it bared too close a uh, resemblance to the Rwanda genocides, Horror in the Black Hills and The City of Madness. They were basically reused as a novel, it was, it was published in 1981, but there were some problems with the publication, it uh, went back one month because the Edgar Rice Barrows estate pushed a lawsuit because on the cover of the novel there was the subtitle The Epic Novel of a Black Tarzan and that's stupid, Imaro is the Black Conan, not the Black Tarzan Get a grip, people. And they had to delay the book one month because they scrapped the cover and rebinded them. And that was a huge problem for sales. There were two more novels written in the series, uh, The Quest for Kuz in 1984 and The Trial of Boho in 1985. The main draw for the Imara stories is that they take everything good Robert E. Howard did in his uh, stories they took the sense of wonder, the fantastic, the action, the theme of strong barbarian warrior fighting against primal evil, only they set this in a fantasy Africa. And this change of scenery, this sense of exoticism, if you allow me to say so, because having salmons and tribes and feeding Imar with fried bananas and pork um, roasted in uh, tree leaves and this kind of stuff, this sense of uh, fantasy Africa was a great sense of pace. It was outside of the thorny barbarian northern warrior that was prevalent in the 60s and 70s in uh, Conan clones and while keeping with the uh, good part, the action and the tropes and all these things. Uh, the racism that was in many Robert E. Howard stories or in Tarzan stories by Edgar Rice Burroughs because both these authors were living in the first half of the 20th century and they were products of their time. They were not part of the story, it was a sense, of, it's a, it was a great sense of pace. We often talk of diversity like political issue, but diversity artistically is also a great opportunity to take some overused tropes and use them in a new way, in a new light, under a new perspective, giving them the trappings of another civilization and getting something unique in the way. And that's uh, very important for me. In 2006, a small press company, Nightshade Books, had a deal with Saunders to publish the updated version of his novels. And they did it tomorrow without Slaves of the Giant King's story. In 2008, the second novel, The Quest for Cass, was also published by Nightshade Books, but then they never published any more of his novels, so Saunders went and um, released some of his works, a collection of uh, short stories uh, featuring his heroine, Dosuwe, which is the Black Red Sonia, through Lulu. Dosuwe was also a novel make, made of four short stories, Agbe Sword, uh, Gimeli Songs, Siminege's Mask, Marwe's Forest, and Obenga's Drum. She was a heroine that was inspired by West African warrior women from the kingdom of Dahomey. It was in where we now call Benin. And I think that uh, one of the stories was made the movie called Amazons, and it was an Argentinian 1986 movie. I haven't watched that, so I'm not sure. These stories were published in Marion Zimmer's Bradley, Sword and Sorceress. So you can see uh, Charles Saunders is one of those uh, cult fantasy authors from the 80s and the 90s that was never became a classic uh, best-selling author, but he had a steady presence as a sorcery writer back in the anthologies of that time. And I want to read more of his work. I don't know if you've read any of his work. I think he's really interesting from the two short stories I've read up to now. Uh, I was very pleased with his writing. He really gets the sense of um, wonder, of fantasy, the savagery of sword and sorcery of uh, prehistoric earth 
on its uh, Africa instead of Europe. It's all about the action and the creatures and the horrors and the heroic barbarian coming up on top. So I guess he passes in flying colors. And I think that the news of his passing clearly deserve uh, him to be mentioned here. Uh, he had two more novels published through, I think it was published through Lulu. He did a um, 2009 uh, reissue of The Trail of Bohu. Then he did a dark fantasy novel called The Nama War, also in 2009. And uh, finally, Imaro's stories and in Numbani Tales from 2017. And there is also a second Dosuye novel, The Dances of Mulkau from 2012 and he had a lot of essays and some sort of stories that were never put in collections so that was my um video about Charles Saunders wish I had more to say about him and if you've read any of his uh, short stories or his books or you think that he's an interesting author and you want to look more about him I'll leave a comment and I'll leave also some links to his books so you can read of his work and Rest in power, Charles. Thank you for watching.